Hi guys, this is Eric at the Film Photography Channel again, and uh, I've got a review this time of a kind of unique, uh, maybe weird looking camera. This guy here is the, let me get it right, the Horizon S3 U-500, as the camera and the owner's manual says right here. This is actually a new camera. I bought this camera new. It is a film camera and uh, it uses 35 millimeter film and it's it's kind of a neat uh, camera. It's not a new idea. This, this form factor has been around for quite a while and I'll show you before I get into the review of this camera. This is a photo of, I don't know how well you can see that. It's, it's kind of hard to see what you're looking at even with this, but this is a photo of the original Horizon T that uh, which is spelled like as a one word horizon with T at the end. Um, it had a huge viewfinder and I had this camera not too long ago. I bought one. It was a disaster though. I ended up returning it. It had light leaks and uh, it didn't do it. You know, it didn't work properly. Um, huge glass viewfinder right there. Kind of like this one does. This one has it in, in the middle instead of on the edge. The viewfinder actually came off and it fit into like what looks like a flash sink uh, cold shoe. Um, and you know, it was more metal construction than this one is, but you know, back to this camera, what, what makes this camera kind of a neat, uh, camera to use is it's a camera that's made specifically for taking panoramic photos, right? Um, but watch this, you see that you see the, there's like a little slit that comes across uh, you know, which uh, inside that slit is a 28 millimeter 2.8 glass lens. Okay, and I'll, here, I'll wind it halfway and you probably can't see the lens, but it's in there. You can see the lens recessed behind that, that slit there and it, um, you know, hit the shutter release and it'll, it'll do its thing. Now what's happening there when this, when this deal kind of comes across there, what's, what it's doing is exposing i'll show you what the film area looks like you see it's exposing the film uh, there. it is exposing the film let me do a slower shutter speed you can kind of get a better idea what's going on um, you see that it's it exposes the film that's wrapped around this uh you know this the, the film plane here okay i don't know if i actually get into loading because it's a little bit of a pain to load it but suffice it to say that the film kind of it got it goes under this wraps around there and it's the film is it's being exposed you know like in a in a cup like a half cup there so what that does in effect, it gives you a frame about twice the size of a regular 35 millimeter frame, which is gives you a nice panoramic um, image. It's about the size of a Hasselblad X-Pan, um, but this obviously doesn't cost anywhere near what that camera does. You can get one of these for about $150 brand new. Uh, from you know, I ordered it from a guy in Russia. It took forever to show up, um, but you know, it did show up and it does work and it. Um, it's a kind of a neat camera to use. It's not not too heavy. It's it is plasticky, but it's it's solid. The viewfinder has a uh, bubble level inside there that you can see, and this window provide is where the bubble level. You know, they kind of use I guess a mirror t uh, for you to see where the where the bubble is, so you can have a nice even you know uh, picture. All right, and just to go over the. The components here, you got your regular 35 mil style film, uh, on slow mode, 35 mil um, rewinding lever, just one big wind that takes up the two frames. There's your shutter release there, it does have a, a regular old school cable release. Film wind happens right there. Um, and here up top is where you set your shutter speed and your aperture. You see that? Okay, so the aperture ranges from f2.8 to f16. Like I said, it is a tiny little glass lens, but it does it. It actually takes a pretty decent picture. Uh, and your film speeds, you can see, are a range from a half a second all the way up to one 
one five hundredth of a second. The 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 old camera only hit one two fiftieth, which wasn't ideal if you know, especially if you're taking pictures outdoors. Um, but yeah, the and the shutters happens in ranges here. You see this switch here it has a yellow dot and a white dot. There's the white dot. There's the yellow dot. If you put it on the yellow dot, then these film speed or shutter speeds apply, as you see in yellow right there. And obviously, if you put it on the white dot. This is the faster, the, the higher speed range that it ranges from 60 to 500. The slow speeds uh, go from uh, half a second to one eighth of a second. So it goes, it jumps from one eighth of a second apparently to 60, one sixty of a second, and then uh, maxes out at one five hundred. Show you what it uh, what it comes with. Uh, you have an owner's manual um, in Russian and. Uh, apparently just in Russian. Okay, you have an owner's manual that's only in Russian. Yeah, I don't see any, um, I don't see any English, but in the owner's manual it kind of shows you here um, how much area this covers. It, it, it covers like the effective uh, focal length of like a 20, I think it's like a 21 millimeter lens, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it, it covers a 120 degree uh, frame, you know, frame there as you can as you can see so that's a that's a pretty wide area that it covers and i'll show you what comes in the package yeah here we have these little filters that it come that this camera comes with there's three of them and i see this one is clear this one is like a um uh nd filter it looks like it looks like it might cut a stop or two and then this is a green filter okay so it's a little fiddly trying to get these guys in here but what you have to do is is get your lens in a position where it's like halfway like right here pretty you know, pretty much in the middle and you know you insert this guy kind of like there it is yeah and it, it kind of has a little spring action and you know, it bends a little bit, as you can see, it'll bend a little bit and um, it'll snap in place and it snaps like right on top, nice and solid, right on top of that lens. You can see the kind of a different reflection now. Now to get it out is a different story though. To get this filter out that I just put in there, um, you got to use one of the other filters with the little hook. It's got little hooks there. Okay, so you got to use these things, one of these things to, to pry it out of there. And let's see if, if I can do this without too much. Oh, there it is. And yeah, and basically what happens is it, sorry, you couldn't really see that, but what happens, it'll just, you know, these guys kind of interlock. Uh, so you use one filter to, to get the other one out. And there's, they have this little hook right there. It'll pull it right out. A little weird, but um, that's it's kind of neat though because the the original camera didn't have the option for filters, so I guess that is kind of cool that you can at least have that. So inside the uh, in the package, you get the script, which goes in here, screws right in there, and you can hold the camera like this if you want to do that. Okay. It also comes with the uh, neck strap. Right here. Nice little red, white, and blue for some reason neck strap from this Russian camera. And uh, yeah, um, but yeah, like I said, it, it's a neat little camera. Um, it, you know, it takes, like I said, it, 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 and optically, it actually does take a pretty nice photo. And I'll, I'll show some examples of that. I, that I took one in, in DC at the, uh, uh, at one of the memorials there for the, uh, for the, the Korean veterans memorial. I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, some of those pictures of like, they actually came out pretty sharp, you know, nice, nice photos from it. I was actually surprised, um, because you know, just given the, the plasticky nature and the tiny lens and, and all that, I'm, I was thinking maybe that, you know, the photos wouldn't look too good, but I was really pleasantly surprised. They actually do look uh, really nice. And, it, you know, the viewfinder is nice and wide, as you can see. It's a nice wide viewfinder. It, it accurately represents 
you know what the the width of the photo that it's going to take but uh one cool thing about it like i said there's a bubble level here uh that's it's a loop the, the bubble level is actually here there's a mirror that, that that shows you the bubble level in the bottom of the viewfinder and uh one one what that does and why that's so important is given that how wide this frame is and the fact that it's taking a picture like this you know it's kind of like zoop, you know doing that um you can easily end up like with a horizon that that bows down you know now you won't have that problem if you take a nice level photo and that's why that bubble level is so important and, it's, and it is very easy to 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 you know balance it out to to properly orient uh the camera so it's it's not taking that that bowed picture but um yeah it it warns in the russian instruction manual and i just kind of gleaned it from the photo because obviously i don't i don't read or speak russian but um yeah it, there's a photo in there showing you that hey look out make sure that you take it nice you know make sure that that level is uh level that way the pictures your horizons won't be bowed like this so that's one little tip for using this camera now the handle that comes with this camera it um it attaches pretty easily you just put it in there and then screw the the collar and I, what i imagine again because i you know there's no instruction manual there it does make it a whole lot easier to level the camera using the the bubble level inside there so so you can get a nice uh even picture because there's no frame lines anywhere in here it's just a nice open viewfinder and it's a wide aspect viewfinder 120 degrees like the lens is is uh able to take so uh you know as soon as you put the handle on here i mean you you can feel it right away it's like oh yeah this is this definitely helps you hold the camera level it's kind of an odd piece i've never seen uh, this kind of handle on anything else but this type of camera the uh the old uh the original one i had um the horizon t whatever however you say it had the same thing it came with a handle as well this camera um mechanically is a lot nicer than that than the older camera the old older one is, is silver and with gray faux leather so it, may, it might have been a better looking camera this is kind of weird darth vader looking camera it, it is kind of odd when you pull this thing out it does get a little attention because the first thing people notice is like where's the lens you know and uh if they actually notice the lens you know doing that doing its thing there it's even it catches even more attention so um but yeah it's a, it's a neat camera it's uh i i do enjoy using it I, uh, this is a keeper for me um i've always wanted a hasselblad x pen but i can't just just can't justify uh spending that kind of money on the camera i, mean, I might get one one day but um uh, you know because uh, it has obviously better optics than this camera does Al although this does take a decent photo um but the, that x pan i know is, is special um but, but again for what for what this is it's a neat camera it's a neat camera it's not too expensive like i said you can get a brand new one for 150 bucks with the stuff that i showed you the three filters the camera body the the you know the handle and the uh the carrying case right there and the next trap I haven't used any of those but you know it's it comes with it so it's a nice little package and it's a again it's not just for you know not just for uh landscapes and you know street scenes or that kind of thing i mean you can really get creative with these type of cameras and you know you can you know like take a picture of a family for example spread them out you know have them each doing something different you know like one could be looking at their cell phone another one could be reading a book two other people could be talking to each other you know just make it a nice interesting uh scene and with the panoramic capability of this camera giving you like the width of two 35 millimeter frames it, it just makes it a, a really neat picture um to to have you know like all these different interesting things happening um you know across the frame okay so to load this guy uh it takes a little doing um or it takes a little getting used to it. it's not hard once you're used to it and i don't know how how used to it i am but uh, what you want to do is you want to pull out a good amount of the film leader uh, this camera will yield about 16 uh depending on how you get it loaded 16 to 18 frames 
and again from a 36 uh, frame roll uh, but that's going to depend a lot on how this goes okay when you when you first load it because you could waste a lot of film loading this camera up okay so what I do here is you gotta get under uh, you gotta get under this uh, uh, reel right there okay you get under there and it, may, it might help to turn the film up a little bit to curl it up a little bit there we go all right you see what's going on there okay hold up on that get that in there go ahead and put that down I think all right so you want to go around this and back under here and here's where it gets a little tricky because all right you see the the sprockets got the film engaged right but the tricky part is here where you kind of gotta hit the film rewind button there and then start to wind this film back a little bit so you can line it up with the spool the take up spool but yeah there, there this is the part that's a bit of a pain is to get this film into the take up spool properly Here we put it. Okay, all right. There it is. Okay, now you gotta find the slit. Oh my god. All right, there it is. All right, but you see how loose it is in there? And then here's the tricky part. But actually, now that it is in there, what we can do is hit the rewind uh, uh, button and keep hold your hand here and start winding it until it gets nice and tight from that this point forward you can wind it normally and that's what really makes uh, it you know you saw that that whole process the way that went that's kind of a pain and it, and it takes a little doing back and forth but this is where I, I'm saying you, you can waste a lot of film because look at all the film that's in there now and look at you know just the, the all that travel that the film has to do to get in, in front of the the, the focal plane um, so yeah that's that's a bit of a pain and you can see um, the back door here you see the curve there kind of helps keep it re Let's see we can show you see the curve here kind of helps keep the the film in line and everything but you know like i said once it's in there you're fine but it really depending on how you get the camera loaded and it's i don't know if there's any way really to to fix this or a better way to load this camera but you know once you get it in there everything works fine now the old version of this the the, the original one i actually uh, it was so poorly built that i actually broke uh the film off in there and i felt it go loose so i i, I didn't open the camera and i salvaged it by uh, uh opening it up in the changing bag which that, that kind of you know saved that role but uh yeah this one is a lot more uh well behaved than that camera was but you can still see it's a little a bit of a you know a little bit of a deal just to get the film loaded in there but once it's in there everything works great just wind it and uh you know just take it from there now uh one thing about this camera when you're taking photos with it um the way it handles motion because of you know because the way the lens moves it it's a it's a little strange the way it handles motion okay you kind of have to um, use a faster shutter speed if you know I've taken pictures of, of folks on a uh, like say on a bicycle for example and you can get some weird effects sometimes um, depending on how or what shutter speed you're using and, and how fast the motion is but generally if it's folks just walking or standing around it'll take just a normal picture just like any other camera just obviously the wider format but uh, yeah beyond that it's it's sometimes you gotta um be aware of of movement in your frame and you know sometimes you just get a, a cool effect and you might have a little surprise uh, the way the photo came out and it's a again fun camera to use 
takes a, a nice decent picture so like I said I, I do enjoy this camera